We're ready to start the recess for the vise. Uh, we've got some layout to do first. We've got this all together. It's feeling like a bench. It feels really solid. The vise will add a lot of weight. This is a beefy vise. It's a nine inch vise, a great vise. I start my layout. I've got my wedge on the underside. If you remember on the inside of the leg, I want to avoid hitting that with the recess. So I'm going to come 15 inches. That's what mine is. Measure yours. That gives me one inch clear of the wedge on the inside. Square a line down from there. That gives me, so my vise is going in this area here. I want my width of my white vise. Uh, there's a temptation here to, that's nine inches wide. There's a temptation to make everything exact with no gaps. It's a mistake to do that. You want a little wiggle room when you start loading this vise in there. So I'm making my opening nine and a quarter because it's not going to be seen anyway. Square the line down and then we need to measure up, probably try and use my square if I can. Push this till it reaches the underside of the bench top. Make sure it's the same all the way across. That gives me the exact position of the underside of my top that's there, just to give me a, an indication of where it's going. But the actual depth that I'm going to make my recess is going to be, I've got exactly three and a half. So I'm going to come down from the top three and a half. That was just to show me where the underside of the bench top. And then I'm going to add an extra 16th below that because I want a gap between the very top of my vice jaw and here. I want a gap of about a 16th to an eighth of an inch because that way I'll never catch the vise with my plane. So here I'm pulling the line across here, but I'm going to come off the bench top just in case something's out of parallel. That was a last minute thought then I realised. So here, just pull that line across and there's my cut line for the main recess. And now we have to start measuring the actual vise because it's got some added mechanisms in there. I want the distance from this button. When we squeeze this, this button pops down. When you open the vise, that has to be accounted for too. So I'm going to eyeball this. Looks like I can come down four and a quarter inches from that top line. And each vice is different. So you have to be aware when you buy your vice. That there's my bottom where the little plunger comes down. These are usually generally 45 degrees. I'm actually going to take this 45 degrees uh, from, again, I'm working through this as I'm doing this because they all are different. So there is the bottom. This is the top of my vise. So probably four and a quarter down here. Four and a quarter here. Take your square and mark a 45 degree from there. You can always go in and alter this later. This is the simplest way and I think it's perfectly effective and it gives enough room inside here to make sure there's room when you're installing the vise itself. So that's basically my recess. So it's from here to here. And I may end up cutting a little section out here, but I'm gonna try this first. So the first thing I've got to do is get my saw into this wood. One way I liked was to drill holes along this line here. It doesn't have to be particularly neat. like this.
I just want something that will get a start for my saw and then I can slide my rip saw, my panel saw into here. Let's see if that's enough. We can pare down this if we need to later to trim it. sides I'm just going to go back to my brace and bit but you could still you could do the same as we just did bore out this corner and then we can chisel that don't press too hard just make it so it just cuts through the surface fibers on the opposite side. If you press too hard, it'll break the underside. I know nobody will see it, but. And you can, like I said, I'm gonna go back with my drill again now just to get down this edge so I can get my saw in. Don't put too much pressure on your drill bit, they will snap. bit tedious but we can do it 
nearly through. hanging on now. Micro adjustment. Just when you thought we couldn't do it, we got it, hopefully. A little bit of chisel work again. I'm just going to break this off somewhere here. Take this down. bulk of the hole done. There may be some micro adjusting here next. Let's try this in. See how close we were. Looks great. So that's it. The vice fits in the hole. It's got a little bit more finessing to do, some packing to do. But that's all part and parcel of it. We'll soon have this vice in the works, in the ready and ready to start working in it. Once you've cut your whole recess, it is easier if you can turn it upside down like I've done, put it on the staging, you've got access to it. This is my vice. I haven't trimmed the hole at all yet. And probably I'm looking at it now and I don't think I need to. 
I have cut a shim here and this is the packing. You could use a multiple layer, you can use three quarter inch plywood, you can use quarter inch plywood, whatever you need to get the vise where it needs to be. I want it to miss the block, to miss this wedge. But that's basically it. So I'm ready. I've got my vise set one eighth of an inch below the rim of the bench. A sixteenth to three sixteenths would be fine. So I'm going to screw that block into place right where it is. Uh, because this is the main anchor here for the vise. Just some decent lens screws. Make sure you put the screws away from where you're going to be drilling the hole for the coach bolts that hold the vise. I'm just going to the extreme outer edge. And you can glue this block if you want to. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to glue mine because it, it makes it a unit then. It helps it to seat. And some decent screws through here. it so there from that point you'll notice in here that there are two u-holes here and two back here generally you can't get to these they're very difficult to get to unless you cut more out of your apron i choose not to i've worked out a way that works great i've had my vices done this way for years not just years but for decades center your vice into the recess like this and mark the U here. That will give you the position to drill a pilot hole in here to receive the main shank of your coach bolt here. So I've taken this drill bit so it still has plenty of bite on the threads when it goes into the wall. So in the center of that arc, Drill a hole that's deep enough to take the bolt. And you can actually drive these most of the way. I've got a washer on here. So I'm going to send this in. So that it's almost to the height I need. Surprising how little a vice needs once it's locked in place because it's really always forcing against itself most of the time. Back jaw against the front jaw, so on. going to do is we're going to slide the, the vise in here and then we're going to screw through the back jaw of the vise into the face of the edge of the bench and that will be the vise nicely anchored. Let's 
great. That was just half a turn <laughs> to the right height, that one. A little awkward to get in with a crescent wrench. I want this fairly tight because I'm going to stand the bench up next with this in place. So I'll cinch it, but I won't over tighten it yet because I want the front bolts that I put in to push this tight against the face, the vise tight against the face. And that's it. It's safe, I believe. So now I need to turn this onto its back face and hopefully over onto the other side. Let me see, not easy on your own, but you can do it if you're careful. So here we go. Open my vice. It's a heavy vice, man. Just like this. Whew. Now I want to make sure this is ready to receive those two bolts. I'm going to put my bit in here. And then the big question is whether I can get the nut onto the head to drive these. And I might just be able to make it. Yeah. So I only just made it in there, but only just is enough. If not, just cinch it down with a... That one doesn't want to go. Take it down with one of these. Crescent wrenches. To start off and then finish off with the nut driver. See, that seems very solid to me. Um, so that's it, your vice is fitted, it's installed. Now we just have to do the jaw, jaw liners. A few little details on that, but this is so exciting. We've got a workbench with a vice in place. A little bit of cinching here. over if I can onto its legs and the next thing is I've got to level the apron to the bench top clean up the bench top not complicated and make sure it's as true as I can get it. So I've got to come along here, rest my plane on the bench and start swiping off this surface here, get it ready.
This is the reason I wanted this lower too. I'm going to take out any undulation. I'm going to check it with winding sticks. Make sure it's flat. Make sure this lines up with this, that kind of thing. And that gives me a flat bench top to begin my new career on. This is my workbench. I plane both with the grain and then across the grain with the plane angled up about 45 degrees or even more. Sometimes I'm pulling the plane towards myself. This might seem unusual, but this enables me to plane with the grain instead of against rising grain, which occurs as I'm planing. This saves time and effort turning the wood end for end or altering my whole body. I check the surface with my plane as I go, just tilting my plane and seeing how the corner lines up across the grain. I also use winding sticks and a long straight edge too. I'm checking all the time. It's important to make sure the opposite apron is also level, so I use the straight edge across the bench top onto the other apron. A few strokes with the plane on the corners removes the aris, so two or three strokes and I'm there, I've got the aris off. Using a file on the short ends of the apron works well too in some places. Surface tear out can often be removed with a newly sharpened cabinet scraper. The final step is to sand all the main surfaces before I apply some finish.